it is very interesting you said that with the Indians. Um, well, it was a vortex, and um, the my uh, dog would not go in the backyard. He was terrified because a lot of them were hanging out there. And um, there had been on the corner of the property, there had been some structure. And um, anything I planted there died oh, wow. in 24 hours. It just like took all the life force out of it. And there were just a lot of experiences that were abnormal that I was having to deal with on a daily basis. And um, it was funny because I was married to an attorney and he said, just tell me what room to stay out of. <laughs> <laughs> he had experienced it, but he wanted no part of it. Right. So I was taking care of the, of the children. I was taking care of everybody while trying to deal with the paranormal aspect of it. And in the end, I did a pretty good job. Yeah. Sounds like you did. <laughs> I had help. <laughs> there, you there you go. go. And you know, it was their land. They oh, weren't yeah. seeing the house. They were basically on the land. Exactly. And it was their hunting ground and special area that they must have done something because they had a, a structure there. So. That's and Im Im I'm sorry, but imagine how startled they were when they ran across you. Right. See, it goes both ways, yeah. Right. That's why when I do my research, I start out what was on the land before yes. the structure. Exactly. I want to know if there was any buildings there, if a previous house had burned down, what was there before the ho a house was even built. Did that anybody way. die in exactly. the property? It, did right. anyone die? Exactly. Was there, and we even do you know, geological research um, with minerals and is there an underlying water current? Oh, yeah. crystallization in the yeah. ground. Yeah. yeah, we'll do it. Um, ley lines. Oh, yeah. Ley lines, you know, yes. Um, faults, you know, in the ground. We do all that. Well, it's funny. Uh, Every apartment I lived in from the time I was 21 was haunted. And that was a, a time where I was very innocent and didn't understand how to deal with it outside of prayer. That's what I did. I just called in uh, the angels to help. Right. But I actually physically would see them moving around. And that was a little scary until you realize that most of them don't want to hurt you. No. Most of them you know, are just sort of passing through. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have the ability to actually talk to them at, at that time. But that's very frightening when you have very small children and you oh, don't course. know if there's a visitation going on. Because right. they're very attracted to children's uh, energy fields. Yeah. So, well, it's such as like I tell the group or a new member that comes into the group is in an analogy such as like you're probably like a beacon of light to them. And it would be as if I were to go to France and... I spoke no French whatsoever, and everybody speaks French. I would feel so lost, confused, frustrated, until I ran across one person who spoke English. That would be my new best friend. Yeah. So I'm going to stick to them like glue. So that's kind of how they feel when they pass on. Um, not everybody's as sensitive enough to hear them or witness them. So when they do find that person, they latch, you know, and sometimes they don't want to let go. Well, that that can uh, be very serious. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I, I've traveled teaching, uh, I have agents, and there was one occasion where I was staying with uh, my agent, and she had an incubus that was actually sexually uh, attacking her at night, and she couldn't see it. She could only kind of feel it in a dream state. And then when I came into the house the first night I was there, it was standing at uh, the side of my bed, and at that point, I couldn't see it. I just could feel it. Right. And uh, that's when uh, I started uh, a prayer. And then uh, about a week later, uh, I was weakened from all of the t uh, classes and education that I was doing. And I was taking a Sunday off. The agent goes to the market. I'm laying on the couch. The next thing I know, I'm being sexually attacked by this thing. It thinks it can do the same thing. Right. And I, then I saw it. I got to see its blonde hair. I could smell it. Um, I, I evoked uh, a prayer, and I got up off of the couch full alert and actually got to see the full physical body and started communicating. And it turned out to be a young man who died of a drug overdose and had come into this woman's house piggybacked on somebody and decided to stay. Mm. She had a party. Somebody brought, uh, brought it uh. with them. They didn't probably know either. Right. So it's a good idea for people 
to sage their homes after parties or gatherings or if there's been an upset of any oh, on kind a basis, right. on a regular basis. And one of the things that I found was very helpful was frankincense and myrrh. It's real, real high vibration. Another thing that I wanted to share with you, sometime in the future when you have the opportunity and you're dealing with an entity uh, that is sort of stubborn and you're trying to help the homeowner with the situation, play a tape of babies laughing. Hmm. It is such a high vibration. Gregorian chants. Well, any time I was on the road and I was staying uh, with somebody, this is one time that I told you the earlier story that I didn't, this is probably what I started doing it, is I would play Gregorian chants before I started my day. And it just felt like it cleared the whole environment. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it might be something you could experiment with and see how they would react. Oh, yeah, perhaps, yeah. On a, it's yeah, high. Um, as far as like the incubus thing, um, or succubus, there, there have been some some in-depth documentaries and um, research done on that in the 70s that has been proven that to be accurate. Um, however, we had a case um, at the very beginning when we started this group um, of a woman claiming the same thing. And uh, when we actually talked to this woman, she would growl at us. Um, I have a PhD in psychology, so I, w I, did, I do most of the interviews, of course, hence why I'm case manager, right? Right. And um, so when I, I knew there was something not right with her. And so as I talked to her more, I realized that she had quite a history and that was um, allowing her to, to might feel this. Um, so we agreed to take the case. And I think we were in the house, what, 20 minutes? And we went into her bedroom and saw tons of medication that she should not even be mixing on her dresser. Um, when we approached her and her husband with this, um, they agreed. Um, she has now um, gotten off all the medication and in therapy and no, pro no more problem after that. Not that I'm not saying incubus and succubus does not exist, but in this particular case, had we went in there and... Assumed. Right. Um, since then, another group has went in and has convinced her it is an incubus and succubus. Now she's back on the medication and out of therapy. Um, and we keep trying to contact her to help her, and, and she just doesn't want to accept our phone calls. But the damage that we could have done had we not looked into the psychological and the historical and the religious um, would have been immense, you know. Yeah, you're walking a fine line because the paranormal is as deep as the Grand Canyon oh, or yeah. deeper. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, a, it's, it's kind of like a platforms and voids. And, um, yeah, they, they even went as far as to tell them that there was a demon in their house. Right. Oh, my. Which, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, uh, yeah I, there's I, so I, many variations with the paranormal, you know, that um, you really, really have to be in this 100%. You can't just, it, you, you can't be a be weekend warrior. You have to be called by your soul, you guys, mm -hmm. to do yes. this because uh, I have had, in my, in my practice over the years, I have had people who were, in fact, um, um, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, possessed by a demon. Their face would change, and I would have these experiences, and I knew how to take care of myself. But, you know, it felt like I was just this close to having a serious problem on my hands mm -hmm. when spirit would come in and repel and uh, protect me or give me what it was that I needed to do immediately in the situation. But I do know it exists. Mm -hmm. And when you run up in t in f and deal with something like that, there's a gut feeling that you've got to listen to. Right. And I know that you're a sensitive and you trust your gut feelings, and that's our steering wheel. We have to, to use it. I mean, it's good to use the analytical, but we also have to use the intuitive. Right, and it, it's very much personal. You know, um, when, we go in, when we go on official investigations or we go on practice investigations, um, we use both. You know, we, we have to go Balance. with, yeah. We have to go with what our, you know, our own intuition is, and, and, but we also have to keep that professional as well. 
Um, so we have to find that balance, you know, walk that thin line. Um, I, I believe a lot of groups, um, you know, God bless their heart, attempt this. But I, I think they're more lured to the personal side of it because they have their own questions they want answered. Um, and that's fine. Or they want to get on television. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we talked have about that earlier. Have a show. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, Michelle, as a woman doing this type of investigation, what drew you uh, to this? Well, it would be easy for me <clears throat> personally to sit here and say I see spirits. But if I can't prove that to other people, yeah. you know, it... I want the proof. I want to be able to, sh like, if I see somebody walk past me and I can tell you what he's wearing or she's wearing, but yet there's nobody there, I would like to have some proof to prove to people that, so they don't think I'm crazy or I don't think I'm going crazy, basically. Sometimes, and, you, though, you do have to just trust that you know that you know. Or mm -hmm. I couldn't do what I do if I didn't trust my soul. Uh, because I'm reading photographs and beyond those photographs is a whole other dimensional right. platform. And so uh, I just think that we're all sensitives on one level or another. In some areas, we're stronger. And I think that you probably have a team of people that are going to develop much more of their sensory awareness. And it just seems to me it will make it co more cohesive and right. make it even more interesting. Mm -hmm. And the stories. I think one of the other reasons I wanted to have the show is that behind the scenes, the stories, mm. the, the experiences that you guys have are worthy of, you know, a book perhaps. Are you going to write a book about this? Um, well, I, I wanted to touch on this one thing. Uh, so Michelle has actually gotten um, uh, confirmation. Um, several times she has said, I, I, I hear a name and then we'll hear it on the EVP. So she has gotten those confirmations, as, as several other people in the group, um, writing a book. So uh, perhaps, <laughs> maybe, uh, years later, I'm kind of taking a break right now, um, although I got three more books to put out. Um, but I would really love to... Um, a documentary, perhaps. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I think the documentary uh, is probably stronger than the book would be because people visually want to be able to see something that's been scientifically, uh, a, a production that, that's scientifically done versus something that you go and see in the movies right. that half of it's fake, you know, it's, and, it's, yeah. and it's been developed to bring fear right. up. We, uh, we just recently went down to Tracy, California to the Banta Inn um, for our very first documentary. And we, uh, we, it's, the Banta Inn is one of the top five I know haunted about places. <laughs> okay, so we went down there to totally. I wouldn't sleep there. We oh, went, I, oh, we did, and this you is did? a good yeah. story. Oh, okay, tell your we story. We went down there to totally debunk. We didn't believe in it. We believe it was all hype. We believe it's just for promotion. Um, and um, the very first thing that happened to me was she was asleep. We, we got a cottage. The manager and the owner gave us a cottage. And it was so hot down there. And so I, I had a wind draft coming through that would hit the stove. And so I'm doing my paperwork on the stove and I have a water bottle. And it vibrated while well, we're in California. So I thought maybe it was from the fault line. So I kind of watched it and watched it. And then it went across the counter. And I looked around and said, did you see that? And of course, everybody's of course, asleep. I, yeah, I didn't see it. It moved. Right. Yeah. And then uh, when I was setting up the camera, such as these here, um, to do interviews, uh, with some of the locals, um, I was adjusting, you know, everything on the camera after setting it up, and my cam camera went very blurry and out of focus. Yeah. And I didn't know what happened to it, so I'm trying to fix it, and then it came, you know, the sharp image again, and then someone walked right in front of the camera, and I looked up and nobody was there, and I went and looked all around, nobody's there, and then I actually got flicked in the neck when nobody was around me. They were messing me. with you. Right. <laughs> so when we went through this all our evidence review, um, we didn't know if we were going to catch any of that. And we've actually, I don't want to give it away, but we've actually caught um, a lot of the evidence that they didn't even say were, were, was going to happen. 